What's going on, everybody? You're listening to the Live a Cool Story podcast brought to you by Story Collective. My name's Tommy. Story Collective is a nonprofit organization dedicated to using story to impact the lives of others. We do that through a couple ways. We produce short film documentaries, and we also have this podcast called the Live a Cool Story podcast. Living a cool story just means living your life to the fullest. We get to talk to people all over the world on this podcast about their story and what they're doing to live their best life. We tell their stories in hopes of inspiring you to live a cool story. Welcome to season two of the Live a Cool Story podcast. We have an incredible lineup for this season. I'm so excited about it. Uh, Some amazing guests coming on that I cannot wait to sit down and talk to. So without further ado, let's get into it. Robo, what's going on, man? Hey, nice to be here. Happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the podcast. I'm really excited about this one. I know we've been talking about it for a long time and I'm just excited to get back into it, get back into podcasting and talking with awesome people like yourself. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. This is my uh, first podcast in terms of uh, the comic book. So I'm very very excited. Oh, sweet. Awesome. So Robo, uh, I stumbled across Robo on Instagram um he's got an instagram page and a comic called we move mountains with spoons and and i've got a really good buddy who's a wildland firefighter and he was reposting some of your stuff and yeah. i was immediately drawn in because it like just the style and, and it was just really really interesting to me so i i was looking through it and and uh immediately i was like you're doing exactly what we're doing at story collective is you're using story to impact the lives of other people. You're using your personal experiences and art in order to impact other people's lives. And I know my really good friend who I discovered you through is, was um, very much so impacted by what you're doing, which is really awesome. So anyways, short introduction, I'm going to let you get into into it. Robo is a wildland firefighter. um, Also comic enthusiast, I suppose. You must, you must play comics. So I'm just going to, yeah. I'm just gonna let you kind of give a introduction of yourself um, right. and kind of what you're doing with these comics as well. So go for it. Yeah. So, you know, like, like you said, I'm Robo. I'm a wildland firefighter out of region five, which is region five for anyone that doesn't know is like California, Southern California down here in terms of uh, wildland fire, uh, you know, geography. Um, yeah, so I started the comic book just out of a lack of information for just the general public to see what we really go through. You know, people think about us only during the fire season, but they don't see the fact that the majority of us are laid off when it, the off season kind of comes around. So I just really wanted to tell stories, my stories and my friends' stories, to just show that we were real, that we're real people with real emotion, and and we're not just you know these one dimensional superheroes or heroes that people just assume we are. You know, yeah. we're, we're, you know, dealing with a lot. So that's what I, that, that's why I wanted to make the comic just to, you know, have people understand what we're going through. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So um, talk a little bit about the comic now. Uh, what's it called? What are you, what are your kind of goals with it? Yeah. Yeah. So the comic is called We Move Mountains with Spoons, which uh, the name actually came from my captain. He had told me a funny story about him and uh, uh, during his rookie year. And he just said one of his uh, chiefs mentioned, you know, oh, my boys move mountains with spoons. And that name just really stuck with me because it just it was very poetic and it was very kind of it just it really rung uh, rung true with me. Um, but yeah, so what I want to do with the comic book is I just want to progress it to a point where it's very po- uh, professionally made, polished. And, you know, the end goal is honestly, I want to make a graphic novel. Mm-hmm. So, cool. so right now I'm slowly moving it. You know, I'm, I want more people to see it. So in a few years, hopefully in a year or so, you know, I can start working on a graphic novel with a print, uh, with a publishing house, publishing house. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's, let's take a step back here for a little bit and let's talk yeah. about um, yourself and just how you got into wildland firefighting. Yeah. So I've always wanted to be a firefighter. Always. I've always loved the red trucks. I always loved all that, all that stuff. But you know, when I was a teenager, I got it, I got into like punk rock, you know, Mohawks, all these things got in trouble and at 18 I got in trouble and because of that I thought the idea of becoming a firefighter was gone you know mm-hmm. even if you have you know some departments they won't hire you if you have a ton of tickets if you have a DUI different things like that so uh, to me at that young age I thought oh well I kind of ruined my life um 
But later on, after going to school and getting, you know, job after job, I found myself going back to school for firefighting. And mm. it was very, it, it very much felt like fate because I was not supposed to be in the class, in the firefighting class that I ended up in. I actually just wandered in there because I was supposed to, I was supposed to be in a German class. Okay. I didn't get that. Yeah. I didn't get that class, but I ended up walking into this firefighting class and the teacher there, Chief White, who's a chief uh, from Culver city, a uh, neighboring city near me uh, was one of the first people that actually believed in me. And from that, from that day forward, I've just been chasing the dream. Yeah. And since then I, I mean, yeah, I interviewed for different departments and I got hired on at my current department now. And I've been there ever since, you know, it's just always been a dream of mine and it's truly given me a, you know, it's, a, it's a passion and a job and I just absolutely fucking love it. Yeah, absolutely. So how many yeah. years have you been in? I've been at my department right now. It, next year is going to be my fourth year, but okay. because I'm injured, I don't really count this year. So it would be my third year next year. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Man. That's so cool to hear. Yeah. I was always, I've, I've always been fascinated with um, firefighting and wildland firefighting specifically. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're, do you remember those, those toys rescue heroes? Yes. Remember those? Yes. I grew yeah, up yeah, on yeah. them. And yeah. it's like, like, you know, the, the police officers, the firefighters, I don't, I don't remember what yeah, else yeah. in there, yeah. but just <laughs> like the coolest things and just made you want to be that person. And so right. let's, let's talk about that. Like what, what are the aspects of wildland firefighting um, that aligned with, with you? Like what was so attractive to you about it? Yeah, in the beginning, uh, my first year, I think I think everyone's um, idea of firefighting is, I want to get out there and fight this fire. You know, I want to get out there and, you know, have fun. You know, take pictures, all these different things. But after my first fire, I noticed that it wasn't really that. The thing, the thing that I did love about it were was you know the friendships, the people that you got to meet, people that you would meet on fires, you know, that you would never see again. You know, I would bump into someone and talk to them for a whole day. We'd have conversation after conversation about where we grew up, how we got into fire, different things. And yeah, I just, I loved it because it felt like it was our own little secret language. It was our own little secret subculture of people that kind of just understood each other. So that's what I love about fire is it's that, you know, that secret language between two people that it's like, oh, you, you've done it. I've done it. You get it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's more or less that not actually fighting fire anymore it's just yeah. friendships yeah definitely so what are what are some uh aspects about yourself like your own personality that um like really aligns with firefighting like like what is it that was instilled in you as a young kid that just wanted to pursue this dream oh i i would say consistency i've always been consistent i've always told myself i i may not be the smartest i may not be the fastest but i will always outwork you i will always I will, I will always charge that hill, and I will, I will always keep going. Yeah. So, in terms of wildland firefighting, it's an endurance. It's a, it's an endurance race. You know, you have to keep going. You have to keep hiking. You have to, you know, you just can't give up. Mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of, you know, fit in because I always saw myself as something, some something along the lines of like a workhorse. Okay. Where I would just keep going. I would just keep going and keep going and keep going, and. Yeah, I think it, I just align really well with Wildland Fire because I just love to be like abused and like yeah. treated badly. Where it's like, all right, we're gonna go live in the we're gonna go live in the forest. We're gonna go hike for days. It's like hell yeah. You're like that's like, my knees. Awesome. Are, yeah, my knees are gonna fucking hate me when I'm fifty, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. so awesome. So like you talk yeah. about you talk about this being a dream when you were a kid, and then you kind of got in trouble. Yeah. And didn't think that you really ever, ever reached that goal. And a lot of people, when they hit a roadblock like that, yeah. they just drop it. They'll drop their dreams right. and they'll just take whatever life has for them. Um, right. But what, you know, talk a little bit about that. How did you push through that roadblock? Um, what, what was it about yourself that, you know, um, helped you keep taking those steps forward? Yeah. I mean, looking back, I, I, I would credit my mother and my family at growing up because I would look at them and see how bad, uh, how hard they were struggling. And I would think, you know, I really don't want their struggle to be for nothing. Mm -hmm. So my mother would always tell me, you know, I don't care what you do, just be happy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's really what kind of pushed me was the fact that I didn't want my family to feel as if I let them down 
and I'm always, I, <laughs> I've always been hard on myself too. So it's like, if someone tells me like, you can't do something, I'm just gonna say like, no, yeah, yeah, I can. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna see if all the doors are closed before I give up. And I'm yeah. lucky I did it because the department that I got hired at is one of the best departments I've been at. And it's truly like, I, I love it there. And I'm so happy that, uh, that I kept at it because, you know, the thing I keep telling myself over and over again is, you know, 18 year old, you would be so proud of you. Yeah. You know, that's a yeah, cool. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it kind of, kind of chokes me up too. It's like, yeah, me at 18 being in trouble thinking, all right, you're going to be a 32 year old firefighter. It really makes me emotional because it's like, seeing where you were to where you are now is just great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I've always thought about this idea of like, um, going back to like 18 year old me and trying to figure out what I wanted to do in my life, you know, where I wanted to go to yeah. college, what I wanted to pursue. Um, yeah. and just like thinking about what kind of person would I look up to and then oh, aspiring yeah. to be that person. Yeah. So I love that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we are the, we, we are the people that, you know, our childhood versions would feel safe with. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. So, um, now let's, what, uh, what got you to the point of writing these comics now? Yeah. Um, honestly, it was just, when I first started doing it, I had accumulated these stories that I really just wanted to remember. Because okay, some of the people that some of the people that I talked to, I never talked to again. So I just wanted to remember them. It was my way of like honoring them. So I would take out a journal and just write things down. Yeah. Um. But in reality, I wanted to make the comic book just to make the guys at my department laugh. You know. Oh, you know, you had a comic book about a fucking boxing match. It's like, yeah, I remember that. But um, uh, when I won this micro grant from the uh, Smoky Generation. Uh, micro grant which is uh, given out every year um, that it kind of changed because it went from oh okay I want to make it really funny to to like wow some of these stories aren't very funny some of these stories are very kind of sad yeah so yeah I think that's why I did it just to do justice to the people that I met and I'll never talk to again and so they're not like forgotten because their their stories are absolutely sad and happy and beautiful but you know they, they they deserve to be told yeah that's cool so it started as a way of just almost kind of journaling like just documenting what was happening yeah and um yeah and applied for a grant that kind of allowed it to grow into something bigger yeah yeah I mean I found that grant one night when I was just scrolling through Facebook you know I'm not too proud to say I was about five IPAs deep and I was like oh you know I'm, I'm gonna apply to this and I applied and I kind of just like you know poured my emotion into it and I, I got it and it kind of lit a fire under me. And I was like, wow, someone, someone sees the value in this. So yeah. I'm going to go for it. And it just snowballed and kept going. That's cool. Yeah. There's always yeah. value in story because story can be so oh, yeah. powerful. And yeah. um, <laughs> one, of, one of the things, one of your comics, one of the lines that yeah. really, really struck me and I really like is maybe you'll remember this. I don't even remember what the comic yeah. was. But <laughs> something along the lines of, um, talking about nothing with the people that mean everything. Oh yeah. 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 And I just yeah. thought that's, that's really cool. That, that really sits with me. And yeah. I mean, I, I feel like uh, a lot of people would resonate with that because it's yeah. not, it's not about like what you're talking about, but it's about the people you're with, which is why wildland firefighting is so special. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. It's just, it's true. It's, you know, it really isn't the fire that, gets you to you know get you coming back year after year to a job that really just destroys your body really destroys your body destroys your you know your mental health it's it's the people it's you know the people that you literally don't need to do anything with that you can just be on the ground throwing rocks into a hat for hours you know <laughs> you know and that also leads me to the next point like the true meaning of compassion to me is like wanting to suffer with the person next to you mm. and that's that's what i want to do that's why i love this job because I don't, you're miserable on a fire. Absolutely yeah. miserable. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> but if, but if you see your buddy next to you and that fucker's, you know, smiling and like having a good time and you just can't help, but have a good time, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's just, 
yeah, it's, it's the people and it's just, they make it worth it. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So let's see, let's, yeah. let's dive into a few of the stories that you've written, I guess. Um, yeah. You, can you think of one that really resonates with you off the top of your head and kind of talk about that one? Yeah. I mean, one of the first ones that really got me, uh, one of the first stories that I uh, got from a person in terms of just talking to them is this episode called she'll be okay. Um, it's an episode from part one invo- uh, in- involving uh, this uh, hotshot that we met uh, on a fire up north. And it just, it, it really just shows, you know, how humble and how like sincere this person was because we met them on a fire. We parked next to them and his crew, his crew member had just gotten hurt maybe like an hour, uh, maybe like four or five hours before she had fallen to this thing called an ash pit. So she fell, you know, hands first and burned her whole arms up. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And I remember just talking to him and just seeing this sadness, this guilt, maybe even shame on his face when he said, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've never been hurt. And like just seeing him just, it felt like he was broke, not broken, but he felt like he was just at the breaking point of like wondering why he never got hurt. Yeah. And then, you know, driving away and then looking back and seeing him sigh, get up, get his tool, get his pack and walk off. It's like, to me, that's just the mentality of a wild and firefighter. You know, no matter what happens, no matter what obstacle gets in your way, you just have to keep going. Even yeah. if you just saw someone get hurt, you just have to keep going. So yeah. that's just, that's one of the stories that kind of gets me. And that's one of the stories I always, I always kind of go back to because, you know, it's, it's so sad. It's so sad, but you know, it's a story that needs to be told. And, you know, I was happy to be, I was happy to be there with him in that moment where he opened up. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. Yeah. Would, would you mind if I took a portion of that comic and put it on the screen for the people watching on YouTube? Would that be cool? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, cool. of course. Yeah. So I'll, I'll throw that up and, and post and that way people can kind of visualize a little bit. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, sure. I definitely encourage anybody listening to this, go to, go to your Instagram page. Um, yeah. We move mountains with spoons, right? Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah, we move mountains with spoons. Check out some of the stuff. It's really, really fun. Um, So do you are you the writer, the illustrator, the publisher, everything? Or do you have a team? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the writer. Um, I have artists work on working on each uh, episode. Cool. Uh, my whole mentality, uh, my whole train of thought in the first uh, in part one was I want a different artist for each episode because, you know, if they're different stories, I want them to feel different. I want them to feel like they're being told by someone else. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm the writer. They're the artist. And I, I guess I'm the publisher too. Cause I, you know, I look for funding. I look for sponsors. I, you know, it's, it's, it's a pain to work with uh print, but it's worth yeah. it when it's in the bookstore. That's cool. So are you in the bookstore right now? I am. Yeah. There's a few bookstores here in Los Angeles that, that do carry the book. There's one in uh, Washington that also carries the book, but we, but we also sell it on our website. Uh, we move mountains with spoons.com. Okay, cool. That's yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're not fighting fires right now. Is that correct? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Not, not this year. Okay. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got injured last year, um, just, you know, a work accident. And yeah, I got injured. It's August is actually a very emotional month for me because it's been a year since the okay. uh, injury. Um, it happened August 6th. And then uh, the last time I was at my department was August 22nd. So I'm right in between right now. Um, but yeah, it was just a work accident where I got hit in the back of the head, uh, in between my neck and the head. Mm-hmm. And um it just felt like a, it felt like a concussion, but you know, little did I know on August 22nd, I would be driving home thinking I was having a stroke. And ever since then, I've had chronic pain from a, my, from migraines and head pain. Um, you know, pretty much like every day up until maybe like a month ago where it's been like, I have like one good week. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just been a struggle to like find, patience with myself to heal and find and knowing that I can get back to what I love. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and, you know, same, you know, it just, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to talk about, but you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna keep going because I need to get back to wild on fire. Cause I absolutely love it. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
how has that been not being able to fight fires? Cause I know that's your passion and that's what you, you kind of, you kind of yeah. live for it. So how has that been for your mental yeah, health? Yeah. How's that been for your joy? Yeah. Um, in terms of fighting fire, like I, I can see like a rip and fire on, you know, on the news and say like, fuck Canada looks like it's fucking going. Um, but in reality, what I truly do miss is like the friendships, you know, yeah. There's an, there's an episode uh, in part two called uh, uh, Lament where it's like I was talking to my therapist. It involves my uh, therapy session where, I, where I'm telling her I miss my friends because I miss that I'm not involved in like the new stories and the new jokes and okay. different things like that. So like it's like a very depressing <laughs> kind of FOMO where, yeah. <laughs> where it's like you're missing out. But uh, yeah, I miss my friends more than I do miss, uh, the fire. Like that's absolutely what I miss the most. That's what I'm pushing myself every day to hike a little more because I need to get back out there because I truly just miss the community that I had in it. Yeah. 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 So talk about some of the um, topics that you address in these comics. So um, that's cool that you're, you're getting really vulnerable and like giving us a glimpse into your therapy session and everything. And so, you know, do you talk about mental health? Do you talk about, jokes like talk a little bit about that yeah yeah i mean after part one kind of coming into part two that's when i got injured i got injured uh, august uh six so it was in the beginning at the beginning of uh part one so i didn't know how long it was going to take i didn't know hey it may take a year for me to get better or even longer at that time i, I just thought okay I have, I have a really bad concussion but i'll be better next month so when I finished part one and I moved on to part two, I knew that I wanted to focus on my journey with this pain because I just held on to this belief that there has to be someone out there that there absolutely has to be someone out there that feels like I feel that yeah. feels the pain that I do that mm -hmm. understands that there's days where you wake up and you have to like tell yourself that the pain's horrible. The pain's bad. You cannot even leave the house because you know, you're sensitive to the light. You can't even listen to music because it hurts. It hurts your head, you know, but it's not that bad where you need to give up. There yeah. has to be someone out there that understands me. So that's why I got, I got more vulnerable because it's just, it's worth, it's worth telling. It's a story that's worth telling. And it's a story that may help someone that may help someone that gets hurt. You know, I've had people tell me like, thank you so much. You know, it, that my stories have helped them feel good about their injuries. And yeah. that's truly just what I wanted to do. Just to have people just be seen. Yeah. Feel like they're they like they've been seen and heard. Because mm -hmm. in the end, this comic has given this comic and the people that have read it and my friends and family have truly saved me. Because yeah. if I didn't have those things and have those people, I would have I don't know where I would be. I I don't know. But yeah, I'd rather I'd very much rather be vulnerable than act as if i'm tough and oh it's okay i i can keep going it's fine i no. there's times where i wanted to give up there's times where i cried in my car there's times where i went to therapy and i couldn't even talk because of the pain there's times where i had to inject myself with uh pain medicine there's times where i had to get botox in my face and my neck you know wow. that's also the crazy thing about wildland because after all that after all that after going through all that the one thing i care about is if i make it back out there with my yeah. friends that's you all I care about, outfit. which is, which is nuts. Yeah. yeah. Which is nuts. Right. It's like, if a job does that to you or, if, yeah. you know, and then it's like, no, no, go, go do something else. It's like, no, dude, I want to, I want to kind of like lean in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So in this comic, we're kind yeah. of, we're kind of seeing other people's stories, but I feel like now since you've been injured, kind of going along your ride a little bit and seeing a little bit more into your story. Is that right? Yeah. 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 I mean, if I obviously if part two would be different if I wasn't hurt. Right. But, you know, part two was just primarily my story. But with part three, now that I'm getting a little better, mm -hmm. I wanted to focus on other people's stories because, you know, yeah. telling just telling my stories is great for maybe one or two or maybe even three seasons. But the wildland fire, you know, community is so diverse. It's full. It's filled with so many beautiful people with beautiful stories. Mm -hmm. that it's 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 worth telling other people's stories sometimes because yeah. you know like me i'm not you know I, I, i'm not a woman so having a woman come in and tell her story you know that 
other women that want to get into wild and fire can relate to her more than they could relate to my stories. Totally. So I would very much rather have another person be seen. Yeah. So are all of these stories, things that you have seen and experienced personally, or are they, are some of them things that others are, are relaying to you? No, uh, see, uh, part one and two are just all mine. Okay. All my stories about, you know, mental health, about all these things, you know, there's an episode, uh, in part one off season that was about like my mental health, like leaving and not knowing what to do. And my friend asked me, Oh, what are you gonna do in the off season? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm probably, I'm probably going to drink and get really depressed and think about killing myself. But you know, in the end, you know, I, I made a comic book. Yeah. Yeah. So talk <laughs> about the off season a little bit, since you mentioned that, what's that, what's it like, you I'm know, sorry. talk about the off season a little bit. Oh yeah. What's it yeah, like I mean, to be laid off to be away from your friends, to be away from what you love. Yeah. I mean, like I said, there's other people that have done this for way longer that can probably attest to, you know, different experiences you know how they kind of manage but when i got laid off my first season i just kind of felt kind of lost and kind of forgotten uh you know they kind of just like tell you all right we'll see you next season and i you go from like a hundred to like zero Mm -hmm. in terms of like your energy your nerves everything so what do you do you know you kind of just the first month you kind of wallow and drink and then what what am i going to do you know am i going to go work a construction job or am i going to go do something else i can but I didn't because, you know, nothing felt the same. Nothing felt as good. Nothing felt, you know, as fun. The friendships that I would make at a, in the kitchen where I used to work kitchens and bars mm-hmm. weren't the same as working fire. You know, after mm-hmm. working fire, the friendships that I've made after that seem kind of short. It's, they right. seem kind of like not worth it anymore because, you know, my fire friends, they call me. They check up on me. They make sure I'm doing okay. And I do that to, for them. I've never had anyone else in any other career that I've had do that. Totally. Totally. Do you, so do yeah. you still feel like you're connected to your, your crew really well, despite not being with them? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like the That's majority awesome. of the guys on the crew, I talk, yeah, I talk to you still like maybe once or twice a week. Two of the guys um, are actually on the panel that I'm doing on Sunday. Um, yeah. And they send me videos of fire. They send me Instagram videos. We We're still very much in communication. Those are, which is crazy because some of the guys that I work with that I still talk to and I love to death, I maybe only worked with for maybe four months before I got injured. So to have that kind of bond, even though we only knew each other for such a short period of time, it's kind of, it's it's very telling about the, you know, the fire community, how like strong it is. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. Well, it it seems, it seems to me like you, you kind of, entered into the season of, of maybe kind of depression and mental health stuff. Um, but took something like storytelling to kind of help be the medicine for that season. And so, which is really cool and really admirable because yeah. a lot of people will just like continue to wallow in self-pity right. through hard times. Um, but talk a little bit about that. Like, what would you say to somebody who's struggling with, with mental health and, or depression? Um, what would you say to them? Yeah, I would say, you know, see a therapist, talk to someone, you know, have a peer to peer session with someone at your department, because, you know, unless you really want to get help, you're not, you, you're not really going to do it. There, there's so there, there's a few months where I was just in denial with the pain. Mm. I kept telling myself like, no, no, you're going to be fine. Just keep telling the guys you're going to be back next month. When in reality, I it didn't get better. And I, I did wallow and, you know, in self pity. But if I was talking to say myself back then, I would tell them like, it gets better. Don't give up. You know, maybe you need to be on med. Maybe you need to be medicated for a short period of time to get better. Maybe you need to see a therapist for maybe a year. Maybe you need to do things that you may not have thought about before. Like yoga. I, I've never done yoga. I do that shit now. <laughs> so, yeah. so just different things, dude, just different things to, you know, just open up your mind to different things, open up your mind to different avenues that you wouldn't have thought about before. If it's religious, if it's exercising, whatever, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you happy in that moment, do it because it'll, it'll truly save your life. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always somebody out there that's struggling with the same thing too. So like you said, like talk to somebody, exactly. you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what talk I really appreciate about what you're doing is you're, you're putting all this stuff out here, out there 
for people to see and yeah. read and relate to so that yeah they're not feeling alone which is super cool yeah yeah i mean that's 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 totally it man just i really just want someone else out there that feels like I, how i did just to make sure you know like, hey you're not alone mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yeah i mean at, at, at the at the base of the comic at the base uh, sorry um the comic book started as a way to just have stories with my friends but now it's morphed into something where I just want to do justice for the fire community. So if it, if it yeah. helps someone, then I'm all for it. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So on that yeah. note, what, what's like your, your goal, your ultimate vision for this comic? Yeah. My ultimate vision is, you know, I've been playing it year by, uh, uh, was it <laughs> year by year or whatever it is uh -huh. uh, playing it by year uh, that, you know, the first season I thought I only, I would only do four episodes that morphed into nine and then part two morphed into, you know, Oh, maybe like three or four to 12. So I'm literally just kind of just going with the flow. But what I would really love to do is a uh, graphic novel, like a full on graphic novel. That's not episodic. It's just straight through one story, which I am working on now um, that it just kind of tells you more about the wildland firefighting field, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's a mix of like funny and sad and different things. You know, I just, I just want something to like have people kind of think of us other than in the fire season, because we are forgotten yeah. when it gets colder outside. Mm -hmm. So if I, if, if someone could read my comic book during, you know, Christmas and think, Hey, damn, that's what they go through. Mm -hmm. Then that's worth it to me. They, yeah. they thought about us for more than just the uh, fire season. Yeah. That's yeah. super. I love that. Yeah. Well, awesome, man. Um, let's see. There was something else I was going to ask you, uh, but I forgot. Yeah. But oh no, here's what it was. Do you yeah. do the history of writing comics? Like, or, or were you a comic book fanatic when you were a kid, or where did this all come from? Yeah, I mean, I tried getting into comic books when I was younger. Like, I I, I would buy comics, but I would go into comic book shops, and you know, the people there they were kind of like elitist, so they would tell me, "Oh, you you read that comic?" It's like, yeah, it's like you should read this comic. It's like I don't fucking want to. <laughs> um, <laughs> So no, I, I was into comics in the way that I would just collect them every now and again. Mm -hmm. But um, I've always, I always loved to write. I always loved kind of making my own world. So mm -hmm. I never thought I had uh, any stories to tell until now. I never, I never thought I had, you know, stories worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So now that I, now that I do, you know, I just, I, I just want to tell them. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Storytelling is so yeah. And that, yeah, that's a huge part of what we do here at Story Collective and with the Live cool Story podcast. And so that's why I was just so excited to chat with you. And um, I hope yeah. everybody checks out the comic because it is really rad. Like, even if you're not a firefighter, just, I don't know, it's just very real. Your comics are very real. They're written very well um, and Thank very you. relatable, even if you're not in firefighting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh I don't have a background in writing. So the, the thing I, I, the thing I always tell people is, you know, I may not be the best writer that y'all deserve, but I'll keep on writing until someone else comes by, come, comes <laughs> along. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, like that's all I wanted to convey is like realness and authenticity and, in, in like the comic book and writing. I did, you know, I, I could have wrote, I could have written a, a story about like fighting, you know, this huge freaking fire, but yeah. you know, I'm more of a small story type of person, you know, yeah, the small human interactions is or th are the things that kind of make a story. Yeah, I think that's what's really cool and unique about it too, is because it's like when you think of a firefighter comic, you're like, oh, yeah. action, adventure. Yeah, um, yeah. Stuff, which I'm sure you'll probably write about and maybe have written about. But a lot of your stuff is like what happens when you're not fighting fires and in the off season and when you're joking around with your buddies and maybe yeah. bad things that happen during a fire. And so it's really cool and really authentic and just really well done. So I appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, man. So I, I know we need to touch on this because I'm wondering, um, your yeah. name is Robo. Where did yeah. Robo come from? That's a nickname, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a nickname. Um, so there's a guy in my department, uh, Jesse. Uh, he always names people. Every year he, names, okay. he gives people like their nicknames, right? So I remember we were out whipping, which whipping is just like weed whacking. It's fire mitigation in terms of like breaking down, um, you know, dry brush or whatever. Yeah. Uh, 
so, you know, I'm laying down in the field. I'm tired. Everyone's tired. And I just see this, you know, big old Samoan man looking at me. He's like, hey, and he's like, points at me. He's like, your name's Robo. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> when he said that, I was like, all right, cool. I kind of latched onto it because it's like, I'd rather be called Robo than fucking something not so great. Or yeah, right. You know, You're like, like, that one's good. <laughs> yeah, that one's good. No, just leave it. <laughs> and then uh yeah he he just named me that and then uh yeah ever since then i just i've just been called robo i uh, i've told people just to call me robo just kind of stuck and i you know i enjoy it and i i love jesse so perfect yeah yeah does everybody uh, yeah. Um, everybody have a nickname yeah yeah, yeah. i mean <laughs> there's a guy uh on my crew called young money jesse we call him mama there's other people you know people that come and go just we give them like little quick little nicknames they they may or may not like it you know, some of the nicknames, but you know, they, they have nicknames. Yeah. It's kind of like camp. Everybody gets a nickname in camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like, if you don't have a nickname, then no, then they really don't like you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, Hey man, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you this question. Um, it's a really deep question and you can just ponder yeah. on it. Um, but if you, if you had to have a mission statement for your life, what would it be? And, and, you know, maybe you're developing it, maybe it's, maybe it's coming, but I, I always ask that question because I think it's so important for us as humans to kind of have a mission statement for our life, something that, um, it's like the lens at which we look at life through so that everything that we're doing aligns with our personal mission. And so if you had to think of a mission, yeah. what would it be? Um, I would probably probably just say something simple, like just to be kind to people, just to be yeah. kind. Yeah, because, you know, we live in a in, we live in a world where, you know, we're measured by our productivity and everyone's kind of on the move and no one's really no one really has the time or the space to be kind to someone anymore. You know, they, they're they just kind of caught up, caught up in their own thing when kindness has really saved me. My friends, my family, mm -hmm. the community that I'm in, their kindness has saved me you know, saved me from a life of, you know, maybe something else or whatever, but yeah, kindness has saved me. So I would love, I would love to just give that back to other people yeah. and just in any way in my writing in in, re in real life, what have you. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. So yeah. um, Thanks. you mentioned uh, you're doing like a panel this Sunday. Talk, talk about that. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing a panel with two artists, uh, Jeff Chang and Caitlin Oren, along with uh, two firefighters that I work with, uh, Andrew Young and Je Jesse Not uh, Uh We're doing that just to kind of talk about everything wild and fire, talk about the comic book. They are two, uh, the two firefighters are people that I based the comic on, you know, they're in okay. the comic. Uh, so yeah, so we're just t talking about different things, you know, different things like about pay, our sacrifices uh what is it? friendships um uh, you know our coping mechanisms and different organizations like grassroots uh firefighting that you know they're they're trying to help us get better pay and better mental health you know mm -hmm. programs and then other uh vets and fire also they're helping us they're helping us out they help veterans leave in the military or maybe just veterans who just left the military and they don't know what to do kind of go into fire kind of have a community after you know after leaving their community uh -huh. um yeah and some more uh, mental health stuff yeah uh close the gap wellness as well she's uh she's a great uh therapist yeah she's doing awesome things cool that's awesome so will this be like yeah. your first kind of public event with we move mountains of spoons yeah yeah it's it's like like this is my first podcast that would be that that'll be my first event so yeah. super stoked a lot of people a lot of people reposted it uh the bookstores pretty uh, happy about it too so yeah. Here's hoping, you know, we're going to have, oh, we're going we're gonna to have beers, food. It's going to be great. Yeah. That's so fun, man. What I hope it does really well. And yeah, you know, that this, I hope this grows into what you envision it to be. Um, but I know it's already yeah. made impact on people's lives. And so um, where I, I think we've, we've mentioned your Instagram and your website, but go ahead and, and tell the, the listeners where they can find you. Yeah, yeah. So you can find us at uh, on Instagram at we move mountains with smooth .com. <laughs> You can find that's our website. You can also okay. find us uh, on Instagram at we'll, we move mountains with spoons. Uh, okay. We also have a sub stack and at Spotify, you know, music is a big part of like the whole thing, too. So okay. yeah, we're on Instagram, our website as well. So check it out. 
that's awesome, dude. And yeah. are your are your comics like available per, for purchase online? Or you just are they just you can just read them online or what? Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and read every um every issue, every uh, episode online for free with music, you know, attached to it. Or mm-hmm. if you want to um buy, or, or if you want to buy an issue, just go on our website. We have shirts, we have comics, uh, we have anything you may you may or uh, you may want. Oh, cool, cool. So that's right. I remember yeah, there yeah. being some music to some of these comics. So do you work with producers too, or like like music? No, musicians? no, 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 no. I just uh, Instagram has a feature where you just attach music. Okay. So I just do that. Yeah. I just that, that that's just another way of me of like feeling like cooler than I am. It's like, yeah, I'm going to put a replacement song on to it. Yeah. yeah. It works. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It has another dimension to it. Comics are kind of sure. animated too, a little bit, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, some of them are just um, not so much animated, but maybe like, you know, one panel might be white and the next one might be black. So I'll just kind of switch them back and forth. Um, not really animated, but uh, I, I really want to kind of move in that direction um, with part three. I'm moving a little towards more animation and maybe even getting voice actors because we may mm-hmm. need, because uh, we're going to need translators for uh, one of the episodes. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Super excited. Yeah, there's a world of possibilities. So many things you can do yeah. with this. Yeah, I mean, just keep going, right? Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's super awesome, Robo. I'm so stoked that you're doing this and um, just, uh, you know, finding a better avenue to deal with things like mental health um, and and just telling important stories because I'm I'm always I'm all about that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on uh, the podcast. Yeah, I, I, I was having like a panic attack before, but yeah, it was it was pretty chill. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I try to keep it chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah anyways dude um awesome talking to you yeah. i'm glad we got to talk face to face i know we've been talking about this for a long time and uh yeah. maybe we'll do another podcast episode when you when you launch season 10 yeah yeah i, I i'd be up for that season 10 fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah man thank there. you yeah yeah robo well, we'll talk to you soon man cool. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode. To check out more of what Story Collective is up to, visit www.storycollective.us or follow us on Instagram at live a cool story. Everything we do, guys, is to use story to inspire you to live a cool story. So if you're inspired, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our podcast, follow us on Instagram, get on our email list on our website, stay in touch, see what we're up to. We hope to see you there.